Welcome back to Rebuild Rest, you guys. Today we're here in the hangar. We got a lot of work to do in the 401, including mounting this bracket. We finally got this bracket. We had to search high and low for it. This thing got bent, whether it had a gear up or something happened. Glad we found it. We're gonna get it all fixed up. Thank you guys for joining us this week. We loved seeing you guys out at Oshkosh. I mean, Oshkosh was awesome. So last year, his grandpa came out and met us here at Oshkosh. So this year he's out and brought his grandpa's picture with. So uh, it, it's so awesome. Yeah. Save Jimmy. the 401. <laughs> so this is like the cutest thing I've seen in Oshkosh yet right here, guys. Hey, mom and dad are letting me go for a ride. <laughs> They're taking Joe for a ride on the golf cart. We got to get a little vacation do some ATV riding, which you guys saw. I can tell you the last couple weeks, it has been tough. And a lot of you guys have been wanting to see the 401. We got some work done on it, but we got lots to do. So let's get at it. I'm gonna bring the service cart over here and we're gonna service the struts. We're gonna get some hydraulic fluid in them. And then, well, after I find my nitrogen tank, it's gotta be somewhere around here. I'm gonna go ahead and get some nitrogen in them as well. Ugh. So these larger gear are a little bit different than some of the smaller smaller airplanes where you have like a Schrader valve. This is a, a little bit different. It's, it's just larger and uh, a lot more heavy duty because I believe these struts here are at like 400 PSI under pressure. All right, so we definitely got the strut full because as I give it more pressure now, it is picking up the whole strut assembly. So the idea is to cycle it now, uh, you know, back and forth in these canisters and make sure there's no air in it. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna let it sit for a while. You just make sure any air that could have got down on the bottom, it gets up at the end of the stroke. So we're gonna leave this thing sit for a while and then I'm gonna come back, hit the release valve. It'll let any air pressure out and it'll capture any excessive fluid that we put in there. So actually, as we filled up the strut, I, can, I could see that right here is literally the filling instructions of, of how to get this thing full. And it is a 300 PSI with it off the ground. So that's like a lot of pressure. If you had a regular Schrader valve in there, it would pretty much blow it right off the top. Yeah, so right now we have it full with hydraulic fluid. We're gonna let that pressure out. It's gonna let any air that's in there out. And we have the jack set, so there's about a quarter inch of kind of buffer that's left in there. How much of the chrome is sticking out in the bottom? Maybe this much. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. Yay! Yeah, so if you look over here, you can see some of the fluid and you can see how clean it is because that's a brand new strut. So normally what we would do, we'd extend it about three inches past there and then cycle it to get the old fluid out, but there's no old fluid in this. So it was just about getting the air out. This thing will settle in nicely and we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and close the valve up here. Let me go over and get the other one done. All right, so we got both mains done, so we just gotta go ahead and get some fluid in this front strut. We're gonna do this on a little different. There's like no weight on here or anything, so we're gonna go ahead and retract that. We'll get this on here and get some fluid in here. And then after we're done doing this, I'm gonna, I think, hold off until we get the rest of the gear actuating properly until we put nitrogen in so we can kind of have it on its own weight. It's gonna feel really good to get this on all three tires. It's 
hard to hold it up and pump at the same time. So I think we have all the air out and right now it is just hydraulic pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and give this that quarter inch of clearance. And then I'm gonna let it go because it's hurting my hand. So I think we're good as far as hydraulic pressure goes. Go ahead, go ahead and tighten this valve up. So one of the things I learned about aviation is parts ordering. If you guys have never dealt with aviation, have never ordered airplane parts, it can be a huge pain. It takes hours and hours. And I don't usually like to do it here in the hangar because, well, when I'm in the hangar, I like to get work done. So this is where I do most of my parts ordering. After spending so many long hours in the hangar, I like to be at home and in a comfortable spot and still be able to be productive. That's where today's sponsor, FlexiSpot, comes in. With FlexiSpot, you get an adjustable desk that's not only good looking, it's really sturdy. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked on an adjustable desk. You're adjusting it up and down, you're trying to type on it, and it's just shaking all over the place. But FlexiSpot is very sturdy. Another great thing about the FlexiSpot desk is it can handle a ton of weight. So if you're just using your laptop on it, or if you have a massive tower, monitor, speakers, and even plants, you'll be totally fine. Another thing I really like about the FlexiSpot desk is it's also a standing desk. And this has really helped my productivity and also limited the strain on my back by being able to stand up while I'm working. And this desk took no time to put together and it's super easy to move around the room wherever you want it. One of the best parts about the FlexiSpot desk is its affordability. It's better and cheaper than most standing desks on the market today. So improve your productivity and limit the strain on your back by purchasing a FlexiSpot desk today. FlexiSpot is having their anniversary sale until the 30th of August with up to 50% off items like their standing desk and ergonomic chairs. And in addition to the 50% off, Rebuild Rescue viewers can get an extra 10% off by using code RESCUE at the link in the description. A huge thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this episode and with partnering with us to bring you guys more content. Now let's get back to the episode and the 401. There we go. We might as well just make that piece come all the way back. I'll scab it out of the other one. Since we got the doubler here. Okay. You now I think we'll just break that kind of in the middle. Use this piece that's already there as the doubler. And so we're gonna like slide underneath that one. Yeah, we'll take that piece and slide it in there. Okay. Should we check with like plane care? I'll bet you they have this stuff sitting around a big length. 18 inches or so? We'd probably have to fly over there and get it though. We got, we got good old Zero Zero Whiskey outside. Well, we could take the, the fastest other. Cherokee uh, 140. Yeah, it's Sorry, fast, Kay. Fastest Cherokee. Huh? <laughs> oh, it, yeah. hey, it, yeah. it beat it. Yeah. It beat it in climb and yeah. speed, the yeah. whole deal. Yeah, I hear I you. I think it's because... I hear you. I, I think it's because Greg worked on it. No, well, I could be, but... I mean, uh, I, I still I mean, don't if believe, you want to deny it, that's it. fine, but... I don't know. It still seemed kind of slow when we flew out there to Bluffton, so... <laughs> Whatever. So what we're going to do, I've seen this repair before, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna order a new piece of this. I'm gonna call this like a stringer material. I don't know what to call it, but we're gonna go ahead and order uh, double the size that would go from up front that would connect to this. And we're gonna make a doubler that will go on the base here, plus one that'll go on the outside of this rib, just to give it extra strength. All right, so other than installing that whole front bracket system and some of the other assemblies up front, we have to get these push-pull rods in the landing gear, and this is the main landing gear. To get them in, we're gonna have to first kind of lube them up, service them up. These were cleaned and completely, uh, you know, coated with some zinc chromate and ready to go. So they install right down here. It is one of the last things that we have to get done before this gear is gonna swing on its own. So this is the actuator box. So we're gonna install it here, all this stuff too after it's installed, it has to be calibrated, it has to be set, because we have limiting switches here and here. If you don't get those limits set correctly, it messes all kinds of stuff up. And then there's also an actuator mount here that the intermediate rod hooks to before it goes out all the way to the wing root. So once we mount it in the inside of the airframe, we're gonna push it right through the wing root. It's gonna pass through this boot. And it's gonna come right through the wing and it's gonna hook right to this actuator right here. So. We have all new hardware here. 
The hardware inside the fuselage is in good condition. We checked it, so we're gonna go ahead and reuse that hardware. We are gonna get new nuts for it because they're a locking nut and we don't wanna reuse any locking nuts. But first, we're gonna go over, we're gonna pull these rod ends off. We're gonna put in the ultrasonic cleaner. They look really clean, but I can feel a little bit of grit in here in the ball. So we're gonna get that all cleaned out, put them back together, come back over here and get them installed. We'll fire up the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll drop these in. Hopefully it uh, gets its way inside there and uh, cleans these things up and we'll be good to go. So if you saw the Saratoga videos, well, if you haven't seen the Saratoga videos yet, check them out. We do have the Saratoga here in the shop. It is now all tore apart because we went ahead and we are replacing the rod bolts that, uh, that it's, it's in an advisory from Lycoming. After a prop strike, you should replace those rod bolts. You can do that by pulling the cylinders off. When we pulled one of the cylinders off, we found a little bit of corrosion in it. So that's being repaired. Everything else looks really good. The crank journals are all smooth. The bearings looked really good, but it was a ton of work. And while we have it apart, we're replacing a lot of just some clamps. We're gonna redo all the baffling, all new material, get it all painted, make sure it looks good. There's a bunch of hoses that I figure once it's apart, we might as well replace. And we're putting a, a turbo, a new turbo on it and stuff. The tolerances were good, but it was a little close. While it's off, we sent it out. It's getting overhauled. There's a lot of parts all over the place. We're gonna clean them all up and we're gonna get it all installed. And then it is 1000% ready for the long haul for missions all over the country. So really excited about that. And we're really excited to bring Greg back because I have to tell you, Greg, you flew that airplane like, like really well. You need to get your like instrument ticket. Yeah, no, I got to. You should, you should do to. it in this. It's nice and stable. It just sucks down a lot of fuel. Well, it's just, it's only money. <laughs> so we got that underway. It's about halfway done. And over here, we got the 235. If you guys remember, I tried to go four wheeling in it. It didn't work out so well for me. I ended up with a little bit of collapsed gear, a bent crankshaft and a really bent propeller. This is an overhauled engine. Um, it's all mounted up. It's got ported and polished cylinders. It has an electric mag that's gonna be going on it and a couple other little FAA legal mods. Uh, this thing should have about 250, 260 horsepower. Um, it's, gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be like really cool to see how this thing flies. We did a lot of the mods that we did to Zero's a Whiskey and you guys saw the Flying With K video. That little buckshot whiskey really gets, it's, it's a really good airplane. So excited about this. This is gonna be a performer, almost a 1400 pound useful load. And it's probably about three, four weeks from being done. We do gotta start making decision on what airplanes we're gonna keep because I can't keep them all. This one may have to go or another one may have to go. I don't know, but it, it's gonna be done Flight soon. School. Flight school, right? Yeah, so it's gonna be done and uh, we'll get to fly it. We'll get to see too, like what kind of performance are we gonna see from it, you know, versus uh, where it was before with the little bit of love that we gave it. Love this airplane, so excited to get that flying again. Of course, we got the Kit Fox over here. We have a bunch of parts ordered for it. We did just drop the video not long ago. So we, you know, we're talking about getting a whole different engine package on it. We're not sure which direction we're gonna go with that yet, but, uh, but we have things in motion to get this done. And last but not least, we do have the Cherokee 160. That was the second airplane I ever bought. It's getting uh, some of the paint redone, full landing gear rebuild, full brake rebuild, full fuel tank rebuild. We found some little cracks in the elevator. So we're getting that all fixed up. We have the engine in pieces 
because it's getting a complete overhaul. So this one here will, uh, will be set up just like Zero's of Whiskey. It's gonna perform as good as, if not better than a 180, and we're probably gonna sell this, or we might be doing something else with it, so keep your eyes open uh, you know, for that announcement. We'll see, but this one here ought to be done, I'd say within the next two and a half months or so. And we of course got the 401, which we gotta get back to. So let's get back at this thing. Hopefully we get it on the gear by the end of the video and we can get inside of it and we can get some of the stuff buttoned up and just get one step closer to getting the Phoenix in the air again. These things have been in here for a little over half an hour. Ooh, and it's really hot. Ow. All right, so maybe that's why we have gloves like right here. The cool thing about them ultrasonic cleaners is we used Hoppy's number nine in it. It's a, an actual gun cleaner. And also it, it, it gets inside of pretty much anything you soak in there and it lubricates it as well as cleans it off. I mean, it's just really good stuff. Now they're like perfectly loose. All right, so we are down here at one of the tea hangers where uh, sometimes Zero Zero Whiskey is parked at. We told Joe that we were coming down here because I have Rob, who is a CFI, to take me up and do some training for my check ride. But what Joe doesn't know is it's actually gonna be Joe's first time he flies an airplane. So Rob's gonna go up and give him his first lesson today. Really excited about this because Joe's been flying our real Sim Gear Sim like every day. He has the bug. So we're gonna go ahead. Rob's gonna hop in Zero Zero Whiskey with him. He's gonna get his first flight lesson and you guys are gonna get to go with. We're gonna camera up the airplane. Super excited about it. Clear prop. You guys have seen Rob in the channel. He's actually helped in the hangar a bunch of times. Rob actually took Zero Zero Whiskey and got his CFI in it. Uh, a month ago. A month, a month ago. He came out today. We're gonna fly a little bit and I'm just gonna work on a couple things because I may be a little rusty, but we actually thought we would do something else. So Joe has been flying the sim, like I just told you guys forever. He's never flown an airplane from the left seat ever. So Joe didn't know this was happening, but he's going up with Rob right now with his new headset that he got that he hasn't had to try out yet. And he's gonna fly Zero's of Whiskey as his first airplane he's ever flown. Isn't it a little windy today? No, it's perfect. It <laughs> is perfect windy, right? today. A little bit of wind is good. You guys are gonna to get to see Joe's first flight, his first lesson, and it is, it's the first time you've given a first, a first lesson. Yeah, it's the first time. For so we got two firsts here in Rebuild Rescue. So let's uh, let's see what happens. You ready to go? <laughs> Clear prop. Push that button in and hold it. All right, as soon as it starts up, you want to go right to your oil pressure. And we can shut the fuel pump off. So I want to show you where the fuel pump is. See it right here? Yep. So that's coming off. We are ready to go. Chester County traffic, Cherokee 9800 Whiskey is departing runway 29. We'll be departing to the southwest of Chester County. All right, so we're going to roll out. I'm going to check final again. Always look for final. Always look down the runway. I roll out on the center line as close as possible. I see 29 in the windscreen. That means we're on the right one runway. See the line to the middle? That's called center line. Let the brakes go. Put your feet on the, on the rudders and on the yoke. We slowly increase the throttle. You always keep your hand on the throttle. Air speed's alive, 60 knots. And we pull back nice and slow, holding that right rudder in. Here's a, a max climb out. How, how comfortable are you right now? Fine. All right.
We always want to look to see where we're going to land if the power goes out. Once you get to a thousand feet, you can turn back, maybe, and get to the runway. So you feel how I'm holding that right rudder? Yeah. See that? That's called a slip skid indicator. How comfortable are you flying like that? You uh, kind of feel yourself getting sucked down in the seat? Yeah. So you want to make sure you, you hold that rudder, and that's what keeps it centered. So we're going to climb about uh, 2,500. And I'm going to show you how to level off, how to do just straight, and then how to do some turn. All right, let's see how much Joe is smiling. So we missed Joe coming back because we went and got lunch. So what was your thoughts of your first flying an airplane? I think it was awesome. Way yeah. better than a sim. Way better than a sim. <laughs> a sim's pretty cool though, especially yeah. in comparison. And a little cheaper to fly. Yeah. <laughs> and a little more lenient on so, crashes. Yeah. So now, how did Joe do? I think he did a really good job. Yeah? I was uh, very impressed. Um, Austin, you ready for your check ride? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it before you could do it. <laughs> hey, hey, you might. I don't know. With my track record. No, so you did good. You liked it. It was a lot of fun. Nice. There's a whiskey it, it fly just, okay? It was different feeling feedback and things that you yeah. don't want to see. Yeah. That's what was kind of cool. Yeah. And you know, there's birds and there's all the things out there. Yeah. Aren't, aren't all that other stuff. How many times How many you bounce did? on your landing? Oh, I didn't land it. I did one backflip, though. One backflip? <laughs> nice. One barrel wall. <laughs> nice. That, that, was, awesome. that was afraid of the barrel wall. The backflip, you know. <laughs> yeah. Bad. Yeah. It's a, you've you done plenty of them. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, I got some food for you. Got some zings here. Uh, yeah, you get the hot one. You got the pepper steak. All right, so we got caught up a little bit because we had to work on these high ends, but we got the high ends all cleaned out. These things work perfect. They were just, they were a little old, a little sticky. There was some old oil and grease in there. Put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, got them all cleaned up. They're better than new. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get these installed. That's just one more step closer to getting this gear to swing. All right, so this first rod, it hooks right here on the gear motor, and then it goes through and hooks this intermediate kind of rotating shaft because then this other rod that goes out to the right wing root hooks in between. Meanwhile, this rod here hooks on here and goes right out through there and into that like kind of boot and then over where Joe's out, where he's gonna hook it up to the landing gear. All of this stuff is all timed. There's like limit switches that activate depending on where it's at. It's really important. This has to be absolutely 100% perfect. Like it's even down to the weight that it takes to pull on like the gear. We'll show you guys later, but very intricate. And again, something it's really impressive to me, really impressive that all this was figured out like way back when. other side I'll fish the other uh, tube out to you hang on try to get the boot ready pretty tight those boots I think shrank all right did that work yep but you see how far that arms off uh-huh that's telling me that one of these other bars probably need lengthened or yeah. Alright, so it's secure, but everything is still loose. We'll adjust all that when we do our final settings. I mean, there's, there's even some loose stuff here. There's a whole procedure in the manual that you go through to make sure all this stuff is right. There's putting weights on here, like it's, it's I've never done it before. So, you know, the guys here at uh, Forward Arrow have done it many times. So I'm going to learn to do it, you know, through them. And, uh, and I'll show you guys how we're going to do it. All right. So a number of things happened since <laughs> Greg and I did the intro. Uh, one of the things that happened is we found out that 
the original piece that was hooked to here was the wrong length. Greg had a tree fall on power lines and these power lines, well, here, let me, let me show you. Wow, you're not kidding. It is laying, yeah, it's laying right, right on your yeah, propane, right propane bottle. Propane I guess bottle. we probably shouldn't be standing here. But it's a good thing I saw it, because I if I would have got my chainsaw run, I would have been cutting it off. Yeah. Yeah, let us know then if you need any help. Um, obviously, until that thing's off of that thing over there. <laughs> until, until the power's I'm, off. That's I'm going, I'm going that I'm way. I'm telling them at Pico. I'm like, just come out and cut the power off. Yeah. Like, that's all I want you to do. I was like, I'll take care of getting the lines off, and then you can send the guy out later. Just have them come and cut that power off. So we took a chainsaw over. However, they wouldn't let us uh, chainsaw up the tree because of the pending possible explosion. explosion. Go figure. Oh, so, no, I was mistaken. It wasn't a 100-gallon tank. It was a 250-gallon Oh, it's tank. a 250-gallon propane tank. There was a live wire on top of it when we got there. Greg failed to tell us that little thing until we pulled up and saw fire police there. So, But anyway, you're still alive. The house didn't blow up. Nope. Did you get the tree cut up a little bit? Yep. Tree's cut up. So now Greg's back. I flew over to Plain Care with Rob and Zerza Whiskey. I got the piece that we need. So now we can put it together. We can finally get this thing put together. So basically, we're going to take it and bring it over and make two doublers, right? Yeah, well, we, like I said, we'll use this piece here as a doubler. Okay. You know, that's already there. And then we'll, we'll splice into the middle of that and then add a little doubler just on the vertical part of it. Okay. And then we should be ready to go. Good deal. We're gonna have to splice this in the middle somewhere, wherever it ends up once we push this all the way in. So we gotta undrill these rivets to get this piece to come out a little bit so we can cut it to get the new piece in there to splice with it. This whole plate might have Down to come loose. Here. We might have to take these to loose too so that thing can come up so we can get in there. Let the noob do it. All right, Greg. Ready for me? Yep. You did it wrong. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. Let's see, we don't wanna be on the rivet because the rivet's probably like uh, right there. I see so we'll cut it like right in the middle here. All right. So that, uh, you know, we got the doubler off. If you look, actually, I'm glad we took it off because a little bit of corrosion under there. So that'll give us a chance to clean up. What's your thoughts? I don't have no thoughts. I don't think I just do. Sand that up quick. I'll throw some aldehyde on there and squirt some uh, zinc chromate on there before we slap this back in. Do you want to make the patch on the outside and get this prepped yeah. while I get this prepped here? Uh, well, I was going to work on cutting that piece and getting okay. that stuff cool, ready cool, to go. Cool. Okay. Well, what I'll do then, I'll get this piece ready and I'll work in between you working on this here. Yeah, well, like I said, take, take that over there and make that piece up. That secondary piece. Yeah, and we're going to go about it, a half inch longer. Yeah, three quarters of an inch longer. Right. All right. Sounds good. All right, so we got this all vapor homed off. Now we're gonna go over the bench. I'm gonna grab some material. We're gonna make the second doubler plate that's gonna go on the outside of the airframe. Next, I'm going to go ahead and mark all these holes. I'll go on the uh, drill press and then I'll 
drill press all these in so they're like absolutely perfect so when we go to mate them mate them both it'll go go quick go easy go well it'll work well we're good can't talk today I think that's pretty darn good. Just in case it didn't line up absolutely perfect, I drilled it one size under. So just in case we get like one or two in and then we have to adjust them a little bit and then they're adjusted to the right size. So we found another difference in the two parts that we had. If you look, this looks more like a factory piece that came with the, the new uh, bracket that we got, but, but this bracket here was on the old one and it looks like it was a little more of a custom piece. The holes are off, so we're gonna go ahead and customize a bracket for the end of that. And then that should be all we need. Yep. Sweet. All right, so we got the bracket made. It looks like it's gonna work. It did take me two tries because, well, just getting the angles right and everything. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick one rivet in the middle. That'll make it so it's a little adjustable. And then once we lock it in, we'll drill the other holes, get the other rivets in it, and it'll be good to go. See where the hole should be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing's gotta uh, come this way, that far. And that's drilled the same as the other piece, so. You checked it. <laughs> so we might have to drill this bulkhead all the way back to there and up, up into here somewhere to try and get that thing to come forward like it's supposed to be. I mean, once it rivets in, it'll all twist itself straight, but I just can't get that to move that far the way it is now. So you want me to drill all these out here, yeah. we'll get this mounted, and then we'll come back to this. But I'm wondering why I'm like fighting the thing and I line yeah, the holes why. up. It's identical to the other piece. I mean, the front's a little bit bent up on the other one. <laughs> All right, so it, it kind of feels like this whole brace support thing has been like the bane of our existence for like, I don't know, the last two weeks, pretty much. Yeah. Like literally we've been working on this for like the longest time. We had to order rivets. We had like just every issue. We didn't have a long enough piece here. We had to fly and get that. We had to make doublers. We had to make triplers. We had to, well, you guys get the point. So uh, this has been like really painful, but it's almost done. It's almost done. And then we can put the shaft assembly across and we can then reinstall the push and pull rod and reinstall the rest of everything else that we had to take apart to get this thing fixed because everything was in the way. Yeah, feeling pretty good about this and really good about the repair. It's definitely a lot stronger than it ever was from factory. And whenever we touch something, you know, that's, that's the way we want it. All right, so we got that mounting plate all in. It's ready to go. It's ready to go. And I would, I'd venture to say that was really bad. Like everything that needed yeah. done. It was a lot of work. It was sandwiched in between stuff. You guys saw, you guys saw so. Uh, but it's in there. We have a little doubler to add. We can add later. 
no big deal. And no. now I can go ahead and get the shaft in. Start putting the gear parts in. Yeah. The gear parts, uh, the push and pull rod from the front, put the gearbox back together inside there. And then uh, after that, you know, the gear should finally swing. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Reg it per the manual so we don't tear <laughs> stuff out again. I'm not <laughs> fixing it again. Oh Read the manual and rig it per yeah. the manual. Did I say to make sure you rig it manual, per the manual? Right, yeah. yeah. This is the bracket installed, all the doublers, and the shaft, and it moves perfectly. There's zero binding. Finally, finally. All right, let's get the rest of this stuff done. All right, so now that we got we got that whole shaft installed. Everything is like smooth as butter now too. Feeling really good about that. Now we just gotta get this, this push rod here attached up here on the rebuild assembly and attached here, which I just realized I'm gonna have to pull. I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. So I gotta figure that out. Can you go up there and that bolt that came out, can you push it through the other side? Yep. Back through. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Good job. Thank you. Yep. All right, so we got we got everything installed down underneath here. Now we can go up top and we can see if by moving that actuator arm, if everything down here will move smoothly. There's a couple things we have to hook up to hook up to here. We have a gear uh, indicator bracket that goes on here that has a switch. Uh, we haven't put that on yet. And there's two bolts we want to replace here. Well, actually three bolts we want to replace. Um, so they're actually on there loose, but Everything will move well, and once those bolts come in, we'll get them in there. Um, what we did do is every time we have something torqued and finished, completely spec, it has red torque, torque goop. All the bolts are marked with torque, so that are torqued. The ones we have to come back to and work on don't have that on, so we're going to know what we need to do. Um, but meanwhile, we can keep moving forward. All right, so we got one of the most intricate parts on this 401 done, which is this whole gear assembly. I had no idea that this gear assembly was gonna take so much work and it was gonna be so difficult, but the team and I learned so much working on it. I mean, these are like really complex for being like an old airplane, but they're so important. So you guys might've noticed that Joe hasn't been around much this week. Well, that's because we sent Joe on his own mission. Just pulled up here at 23rd Garage. Let's go see. Uh how the Austin looks and say hi to the boys. Oh, there it is. This is the car that all you can win. All you gotta do is say, I want the Austin. This thing looks sweet, you man. Ready to pick this sucker up? Yeah, yeah, we're ready to take this home. We're gonna get it new top put on it right away. Uh, any interior dressing we need to do to it, you know, snazz it up a little bit. Then we gotta get on to the mechanics. We got her all loaded up, she looks good. She's ready to go home back to Pennsylvania. It's a long drive, so we're gonna get started. So guys, we got the Austin back here and we may or may not have already got a bunch of work done on it. So if you haven't checked out the Austin videos, make sure you do. Check out Tim Gentry's videos on it, 23rd Garage's videos on it, and just keep a lookout because we're gonna be giving that away for free. And I gotta tell you guys, it looks brand new. It looks so good. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for being part of Rebuild Rescue. Take care. 
Sure. Do that one more time. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>